Welcome, crafty friends, to Donna Creation and more. I am Donna, and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today, we'll, I will be sharing with you Spring Flowers. It's a collaboration hosted by Amanda from Six Kids and a Glue Gun and Brenda from Rustic and Lace DIYs. DI number one, I will be sharing with you three Spring Flower Farmhouse style DIYs. So for DIY number one, we're going to start off with a Dollar Tree Hula Hoop. And then I have some of this burlap ribbon that I will be using. And as you can see, you can see it through, so I have to remove this. This is one of the small size hula hoops. I've had it in my stock for a while. Actually, this is a sticker on this hula hoop. I was actually pretty surprised to realize that's all it was just like shrink wrap plastic. So I will continue removing this. I thought it would be quick and easy until I realized it was a sticker. Anyhow, let's go on with today's collaboration. I will have in my description box below the link to the playlist of all these wonderful ladies and all the wonderful creations they come up with. So please check out the playlist. Just sit back, grab yourself a drink. It's Friday. If you don't drink, have a cup of coffee. I love watching these playlists because, gosh, we all come up with so many different ideas. But I apologize, I keep hitting the camera. But I do apologize in advance right now. Because this toll hoop is pretty big for being a small size. So it was really hard to record and keep it in frame for you to see everything I do. So luckily this hula hoop is gray. Yay. So I'm just going to take some, this is some really crappy glue. B7000. And I'm using it because it doesn't really matter because I'm going to be hot gluing it anyhow. But just so there's some extra security on this hula hoop to keep it together. So I'm going to add some hot glue, gun, uh, hot glue, and I'm going to start with my burlap ribbon on an angle. And you want to make sure that with this type of ribbon that you have a complete solid glue line or it will fray. And I recommend getting them protective finger protectors from Dollar Tree. They're awesome. That way you can touch this hot glue and mask it down in there to keep it secure and from praying. Now we'll start wrapping it around. It took me a while to figure it out exactly how I was going to do this. 
and stay in frame for you guys and keep the ribbon from getting twisted so I wrapped it around several times and then we give it a dab of glue but I did find a better technique as I went along and I will explain that I was really wrestling with this ribbon on this bowl. So I wrap it around like three times. And then I give it. See, I'm just, you'll see, I'll get the rhythm here. Once I figure out the best way to do this. Still wrestling, but you see how you have to gather it up right there, tuck it under, and then pull your ribbon around tight. Why is it whenever I go to record my dog wants out? Scarlet! Enough! Anyhow, I decided to take all the ribbon off the spool. And continue wrapping it around. And I do it th three times. And again, I apologize. Like, this is like really hard to do this big hula hoop and fight with this ribbon at the same time so I'm trying to save my ribbon so I wrap it around three times and then I I'll show you in a minute here Here I am, then I'm like pulling on it to try to stretch out the ribbon so I'm not using so much and it's not overlapping a lot. So that way it's just covering the very edge of each end of each ribbon. And then I'm going to give it a little bit of hot glue. And here you're going to see a better view. So we're wrapping it once. And you see that it's loose because you're going on a diagonal. I'm just going to tuck it down and tighten the, the next loop around. And we're going to do it three times. Again, stretching it out to make sure we're not too far overlapping and then we're going to give it some hot glue after the third wrap and then we're going to do it again three more times so we're going to wrap it around pull it tight tuck that down just like that Hold it in place, pull your ribbon through, hold it down again, hold it on the edge, 
wrap it around again and then do it for the third time we're going to stretch it out so we're not wasting our ribbon And then we're going to tack it with some hot glue in place and continue until we finish wrapping the hula hoop. I apologize if you hear any noise. I have to go let my dog out. I see all three of them. Buddy, come on. Buddy. Come on, you guys gotta stay out while I'm recording. Got it. Oh no, cat, you stay off the table. All three of you. Out. Let's go. You can stay out until I'm done. Sorry, you guys. If you saw my one video, I have three dogs. And it seems like no matter what, every time I go to do a voiceover, Scarlet, my King Charles Spaniel, always wants to go out. It like never fails. I really should learn my lesson by now. Now see on the top of my hula hoop I have like a little gap. Where I pulled the ribbon too far. I do fix that. You just add a little bit of hot glue there. To close that gap. I'm so glad this hula hoop was gray on the inside. Excuse me. Coffee went down the wrong tube. <coughs> <coughs> so we're just going to finish off where we started. Hot glue it and cut the excess off. Now I'm going to apologize in advance because this video is pretty long. Some of my followers don't like my videos fast. And so... Like they said, I'm teaching you guys. So, oh my god, and dropping stuff. And so in this tutorial... I um, also will be showing you two painting techniques. So I have my hula hoop all wrapped in my burlap ribbon. Then I have these Easter lilies that came in something I got from Habitat Humanity and I took it all apart and I'm going to use these flowers in this DIY. And again, I do apologize. I try to stay in frame so you can see. I'm letting you know I'm starting at the bottom there and I'm marking my way up to one. I'm doing like one quarter of this hula hoop in these flowers. 
so these, these leaves are already bent and glued together and they're super long so I'm gonna leave them that way and I'm just gonna hot glue it and then stab in <laughs> Stab the wire through the ribbon, the burlap ribbon, and then start adding my white lilies here. There are two different kinds. This one's like a velvet, and the other one's just, I guess, a regular polyester or whatever fake flowers are made out of. So I'll let you guys sit back and watch me design this. That's basically all I'm going to do is be adding these flowers. For this very unique door wreath. And while I'm doing this, give me a moment. While oh, you're watching, me fuss with these leaves and petals, and I have to make sure everything's perfect and the way I want it. You all know if you follow me. But anyhow, if you're one of my subscribers, welcome back. And if you're new here, welcome to my channel. Please consider subscribing. I do all different types of DIYs. I really recommend checking out my videos. I'll take you no time at all to just glance through and see if it's something you'd be interested in joining and following me on this wonderful journey. And I also want everybody to know that when I get to 1k subscribers, I will be doing a giveaway. Still deciding on that. I'm not too sure if it's going to be a gift card or a craft box. On my channel, I do lots of different DIYs from, oh gosh, from glam to resin to from glam to home decor, um, farmhouse, holiday decor, fake bakes, I will be bringing candles, jewelry, resin to my channel this year. I will probably be incorporating my sister into my channel this year because she's into a lot of crafts. Her style is totally different than mine. She gives me ideas every day. But I always end up doing my own thing. I do take her advice. Whenever she tells me an idea, I know we don't have the supplies. She's got, like I said, totally different crafting style than me and way more supplies than I do. And also, I would like to wish my sister a happy birthday because her birthday just passed and she has been starting to watch my YouTube videos. So happy birthday, sis. I love you. And also, comment below. Let me know which one is your favorite out of all these. And this is just part one. Part two will be coming tomorrow. So hit that bell to be notified. I think it's at either 5 or 6 p.m. Eastern time.
So here now I got the hula hoop propped up onto my camera stand. I'm trying to figure out the best angles for me to see, you guys to see. Do not keep hitting the camera. Because this hula hoop is bigger than my desk. Um, let's see what else do I gotta say. I don't know. Normally I ramble on and on. I am a talker. I will be, um, having soon. It's called Premiere Videos, where I can sit and chat with you guys. So if you subscribe... Or if you're one of my subscribers, I have on my community page where you can vote at what time will work best for you guys. The more people that can join and chat with me, it would be really awesome. I think it would be so cool for us to all sit back, watch a video, and chat. And then once I get to... I 1k subscribers and I can have perks and all we can craft together gosh we could do so much stuff I cannot wait my sister was talking to me today about doing um some type of um like mystery box crafts that a lot of YouTubers do. We might get into that. Who knows. I can't do that alone. Do mystery boxes. So. I think it would be interesting to do. This one collaboration I join into. That the same person that's hosting this. Brenda. She is awesome, by the way. So is... Oh my god, just one blank. Amanda. So please check out their channels. Anyhow, Brenda does this collaboration that I love that she does. Every month is where... It's called Just Your Imagination. And she gives us three products. The one we're coming up with this month is, and I'm super excited about this one. Oh my gosh, so excited. And you wouldn't even believe what I come up with. With plungers, what we got? We got to use plungers, rubber stamps, and the fencing, fencing from Dollar Tree. And I really think it'd be really cool to do, like, mystery boxes with mystery items like that. That people would have to come up with ideas, to, craft ideas to use items like that. I don't know, my sister's got all these ideas, but then I have my own ideas. I want to teach jewelry classes. I want to be able to provide, you know, as much interaction as I can with my YouTube family. I've been really working hard on my videos and making them better. And to get my YouTube hours. So I can offer all these perks soon to you guys. And just, oh gosh, have so much fun. I just can't wait. And open my Etsy store. So, here I'm just now taking my burlap. My burlap, yeah. My twine here. And I'm just going to make a hanger. 
And you'll see me flossing with this. You know, I'm just tying a little knot on the end. I really tried to do it, and I couldn't figure it out. I don't know if it was just I'm tired or what. I didn't want the knot at the top. I wanted the loop at the top, but every which way I did it, I ended up with the knot at the top, and it drove me nuts. So I just said, forget it, the knot's going to be at the top, who cares? You're not going to see it when it's on the door hanger anyhow, or hanging off a hook. I mean, look, I'm trying, like, every direction, like, why can't I get this other side <laughs> hanging up there? without the knot. I don't know. I gave up. So I just put it on there, add dab hot glue, tightened it. And now here's the final reveal. I think it's super adorable. Great little farmhouse type floral spring wreath to hang on your door or around your house. It would look really nice above your fireplace on a mantle. Add some more of my DIYs to it that's coming tomorrow on your mantle. Whenever I do, like, a series of crafts normally I try to incorporate them to match and go together so now let's get on with DIY number two this one's a doozy here turned out really pretty I got this box this is really antique box already done like this um Actually, I'm going back there this tomorrow. It's a warehouse that used to be a woodworking fabrication factory. And so I got this from the woman. Her dad passed away. So all this stuff at Antique I've been getting. And I'm getting more tomorrow, so I'll be bringing more stuff to my channel. But here I have this Dollar Tree plastic bunny. I actually thought it was three pieces. I did not think it just went together like that. And I have some Waverly white chalk paint. And I'm just going to give it a couple coats of this paint. Now, I didn't do this, but I know you're supposed to. In order for paint to stick to plastic, you're supposed to sand it. Unless, I guess, if you're using that plastic spray paint. But I did not do that, but I'm letting you guys know. I have no problem with it this moment after it's all said and done. I just finished it. And so in this tutorial here, I will be showing you step by step and I want you guys to watch very carefully because I'm going to try to make this bunny look like a wood bunny. And I think I did pretty good at succeeding it. Let me know what you think. Did I succeed or did I not? And then on the last DIY, I'm doing a galvanized painting technique, which it like amazed me because you'll see it right in front of your eyes transform. And it was super quick. Now this one, because it's going to take longer. Now I was told 
after you do the white, you add your Waverly brown wax. But I could not find it. I'm moving my craft room, you guys. And I have no clue where it is right this second. It was not up with all my Waverly chalk paints or my other paints or anything. So it must be still thrown in a box when I cleared my desk off and I moved my craft room. So if you're interested in stuff like that too, craft room and organization, follow me and check out my videos. I'm on video number three. <laughs> it's a long process moving from one room to another. In between crafting so I did get some done this week and it also helps I got a wonderful viewer that gave me some tips that's what I do like is when you guys comment below and give me your thoughts and tips but you guys see things I don't like she saw things that I didn't see when I was doing my craft room makeover and moving and she was like you know what take all them plastic containers put all together because I had them everywhere from one room to the other and I did do that and then she was like and your, your dining room table she's like I would clear that off and use that to sort so I cleared it off so I got that part done with she, her voice, as far as I've gotten so far. Been a rough week, I haven't had much sleep at all. Been in a lot of pain from my sciatica. It just really, ugh. Makes you miserable. Anyhow, you guys don't need to hear my problems. So here I have two damp sea sponges from when I used to paint my house. And I'm using Territorial Beige. And I used to paint, use these sea sponges when I did, um, painting techniques on my walls because I used to want to be an interior designer and I love faux finishes and now here I'm using burnt umber so we're going to start with the territorial base first And I just, and okay, let me just say this. It's gonna look worse before it gets better. Believe me, do not worry. When you see the final product, you will be shocked. So first I'm sitting here dabbing this. And that works because it's going to give it more of a two-tone effect one side to side to start wiping it on because it was just taking too long. So I'm wiping and dabbing at the same time. Trying to cover all the white paint. Now you don't have to do this in brown. You can do it in two different color grays. If you wanted that lighter grayish wood look.
This bunny keeps coming apart. I have to go back and get another one because I like doing fake bakes and other decor with plaster of Paris. So now I need another one to have it for a mold. I spent so much work painting this to make it look like wood. And it turned out really good. And I'm not going to end up taking it apart and using it as a mold. I really thought it, it there was three pieces. It's what it looked like. It looked like it was a three pack. So now I'm going to add some of the burnt umber. Don't worry. I said it's going to get worse before it looks better. Just trust the process. I'm just taking my heat gun in between, drying the layers. If you're a crafter, I recommend getting a heat gun. Oh boy. Nothing beats a heat gun. Not having to wait for things to dry. So now I'm just mixing the two colors, going back and forth, and working them in together. So you just want to keep mixing and blending, blending, blending. Here I'm just touching up some spots I couldn't get with the sponge. Again, mixing my two colors together. I'm drawing it in between. Blowing it over. <laughs> oh, that was too funny. As you see, the more and more I work it and blend, the more and more it's starting to look like wood. Here I'm just doing the bottom. And yeah, no, my fingers keep pulling the paint off because my fingers are wet with paint and water. And again, like I said, I didn't sand, sand it. Now I'm taking a wet paper towel. And some black paint. 
and I'm gonna dab it into my paint and dab most of it off. Now I'm gonna wet wash this black paint on my bunny. Yes, don't panic. Again, it looks worse than it is. It trust the process. Now I'm going to start blending again with the burnt umber and what did I say it was? The taupe color? I can't remember. Oh, territorial beige. Ugh. It starts to look better, believe me. So I'm grabbing more of that beige to lighten it up more. Give it a quick dry so I can finish working on it. I'm just still dabbing on the territorial beige. Drying it again. Now instead of dabbing, I'm like wiping it back and forth like a wood grain would go back and forth. So I'm just going to keep messing with it until I get the color exactly how I want it. I don't want it too dark. And I'm pretty happy with the way it looks. So I'm going to give it a quick dry. Final dry. Tell me if you think it looks like wood. Be honest. Here I have my foam cutting tool. So I'm going to set my bunny aside. I'm going to get my planter box. After I wipe off my table. I'm such a messy crafter. Here I have the Waverly White chalk paint again. And I'm dabbing it on a wipe. I don't know what was available.
him just like dry brushing it on this box to give it some detail. Why well, do I always get the hiccups too when I'm on the phone recording on the phone? Oh goodness. Just wanted to give it that little white wash look. I was gonna sand off the rosemary name and the stars and all, but you know what? That good was like farmhouse. So I was like, no, I'm gonna leave it. It's not bright or anything. And plus, someone made this way back in the day. Jesse has one more box I'm gonna get from her tomorrow. I think I said a different herb on it. I think it was bigger than this one. I mean, coin, you can't beat it. I paid $2 for it. It's like treasure hunting there. It's so fun. So I'm adding water to my paint when I'm dabbing it off. I'm adding water into my paint to dilute it. And then dabbing it off and then like whitewashing over the wood. So we're done with that part. Now I save craft I save foam from everything. So take my little foam cutter and cut my foam to fit in here. So I went and got some extra foam so I could fill it up. I love this foam cutter. Look at that. Light butter. No mess, no nothing. They're cheap. You can get them off Amazon really cheap. And look, all my little scrap pieces fit right in there. Recycle, recycle, recycle. I love to recycle and upcycle. I have turned coffee creamer bottles into, gosh, trees and angels. Anyhow, I have some flowers here. I got these. They are different flowers. These are from Walmart. Dollar general I have the lamb's ear lavender lilac and then I got this crocus bouquet from Walmart they were four dollars for each bouquet they were so pretty if I'm saying that right and then I have the Spanish moss here. My last little bit. I need to get another bag. I've been using it so many of my farmhouse DIYs. Especially when I did my farmhouse egg wreath. I used a lot. Don't mind me what I'm doing here. First I was going to hot glue this hanger. And I was thinking of maybe hot gluing it. And then maybe adding something to it later. But I said no. I'm just going to leave it like that. Hang down. It looks really pretty good. Turned out really pretty when it's all said and done. So now I'm just going to decorate my flower box with all my different flowers. Now, if you don't have a wooden box, here's a simple solution. Go to Dollar Tree and just get one of them plastic planter boxes. And if you want to add rope to it, add rope to it. If you don't, you don't.
Or instead of one of them plastic planter boxes, get one of them, um, no, I would definitely say one of the long, long plastic ones if you're going to use the Dollar Tree Bunny. Because one of the small galvanized ones wouldn't work. So I definitely recommend getting one of the long plastic ones. If I didn't have this planter box in me redoing it over into a DIY, I would have used a Dollar Tree one. So you can just sit here and watch me finish decorating my planter box, make it all nice and pretty. Actually all said and done, the bunny does stay in place really good with all the flowers holding it in place. Yes, I know I hot glued it in, but you'll see it comes off because I am shoving flowers behind it as I continue. I would recommend maybe adding some Dollar Tree rocks or more. Or I wouldn't even spend your money. Good God, go get a rock out of your garden. Put inside for weight. Since they're so lightweight. But I had no problems with it sitting in here. Oh, I have this one I've been using all my DIYs lately for farmhouse. This I got from the Dollar General for $2. I went back the other day. They had no more. All the in the Dollar Tree didn't have any more than one flowers I used in my rabbit um floral wreath. Oh, I was so upset. Them flowers were so pretty. I'm telling you, when you see these flowers, you gotta grab them. Because once they're gone, they're gone. I'm hoping they'll come back with some because the light color they come out with this year looks so much better than the dark green. Again, please let me know what you think in the comment section. If you're a new subscriber, please let me know so I can welcome you. I get so excited when I get new subscribers and they let me know. And I want to thank... Amanda and Brenda for hosting this collaboration. Thank you, ladies. You both are fabulous. And I admire you both so much. And I just love all my YouTube family. And here's the final reveal. Now tell me that didn't turn out good. That bunny looks wood to me. Alright, here's DIY number three. The last DIY this DIY this is gonna be a quick, easy, simple one. I got this little succulent water can ceramic from Dollar General for three dollars. The other day, I thought it was super cute. Trying to get this rubber plant out of here. Now this one's really cool. This is gonna transform in front of your eyes immediately. So I'm gonna take some metallic silver paint and some black paint. And, again, my wet sea sponge. And Dollar Tree does sell these sea sponges. 
I've seen them there before. If you see them there, grab them. Because let me tell you, back in the day when I bought this sea sponge, they are expensive. Which I bought a big one because it was for painting walls. But they're not cheap. So I start off by dabbing on the silver metallic. You know, I start to wonder when I watch my videos if I should name myself the Messy Crafter because I am a Messy Crafter. My hands are always a mess. I'm always covered in paint because I never wear gloves. So I'm trying to make this look like the galvanized metal and it does work. It's going to transform right in front of your eyes. You guys, you have to see this. Once I get done adding the silver on here. Which of course I have to do two coats. So I'm just going to give it a quick dry. Add my second coat on. And I'm going to use, as you see, them flowers sitting there on the left, the purple lilac. I love lilac. That's one of my favorite plants. I have so many different lilac bushes. They smell so good. I have purple and the red color. In my garden. On top of a whole rose garden. I started this thing with my husband. Every year he has to buy me a rose bush. That way. When he's no longer with me. I will still have forever roses from my husband. I thought that was a pretty good idea. So the best roses to buy if you buy roses for your rose garden are the knockout roses. That's my little garden tip of the day. <laughs> So here I'm done with my second coat. And right now we have a silver ceramic watering can. With some rocks in it. Now watch this you guys. Taking some black paint. Now I'm going to take that wet sea sponge. Dabbing some of it all. Look at that. Transformed right in front of your eyes. Pretty amazing, isn't it?
If you like that, give me a thumbs up. And again, as I said, hit that bell, because part two coming tomorrow. More farmhouse spring for DIYs. I'm not sure all floral, but I'm thinking I might incorporate a tear tray. A farmhouse tear tray. We'll see. We'll see what I come up with tomorrow. So stay tuned, you guys. You never know what I'm going to bring to my channel. Here I went and grabbed a little bit more of that peat moss. Out of my planter box. And I'm going to hot glue that in here. And give it a little trim. To hide these rocks. Because I don't want to see these ugly rocks. And this I will be adding to my little tear tray that I'm making. And I have a couple more little tear tray farmhouse ideas I'll be incorporating in my DIYs tomorrow. So not all of them, yeah, so not all of them are going to be floral. I have a huge list. My mind goes crazy when I start thinking of DIYs. So I'm just going to take these little lavender plants. First I was thinking I can just cut them. But there's nothing to stick into. So I have to take them all apart. Can't stick them into hard rocks. Plus they were too tall. So I'm just going to hot glue the greenery in. And then the flowers. And again. Please check out my other videos. I'm going to try to squeeze in, in between all this farmhouse, I really want to make a glam um, table. For my glam flower bouquets that I have made, for my centerpieces I have made on my table. The one I will be moving, so I need a table, and I figured I will make myself a little table to go in my dining room, and I will be doing that within, hopefully within the next week. Hopefully maybe by Sunday I'll have it up. We'll see. So if you like chandeliers, check out some of my videos, because I love chandeliers. And I love using crystals. And transforming Dollar Tree items into glam decor. So I'm about done with this DIY. I just want to finish adding in my greenery. You know, 
need a fan there to make this hot glue dry quicker. Did you notice it kept falling on me? And the low time glue gun. And then we'll stay tuned for the final reveal. Now here's the final reveal. And there's where I just turned my flash on. Because the where this shelf is, I need to put a light above it. I have recessed lighting and the whole room's lit up. But now that I put bookcases there, if you see my craft room, you'll see it. And this is where I'll be doing my final reveal photo. And it's really dark here. So thank you for watching. Please like and share and subscribe.